In one of the largest gatherings yet, hundreds of thousands of protesters lined the streets of Seoul, rallying against the government and setting off a new chain of events. Seoul and Tokyo signed a preliminary military information pact less than 20 days after talks kicked off. What now lies ahead? The Trump effect is being felt in many different fields, and a lot of questions remain unanswered on Seoul-Washington ties and defense cooperation. All this, right ahead. Welcome to News Inside. I'm An Chang Hyun. Let's meet our panelists who are joining us once again. Professor Shin sang yup from Gyeong University Graduate School of International Studies. Welcome back. And uh, Dr. Pong Young Shik from Yonsei University Institute for North Korean Studies. Good to see you again as well. Korea's political front has seen a whirlwind of activity in light of the Chesun Shil probe, with momentum quickly building, especially after hundreds of thousands of protesters took to the streets last weekend. What impact will the recent events have on this administration, and where is public sentiment headed? First, here's a look at the latest developments. This past weekend, people flocked to Kwangwoman Square in a protest that organizers say reached one million in size, a clear indicator of public sentiment toward the recent political scandal. This has put a fresh set of decisions by the country's political leaders into motion. On the 14th, the three major parties reached an agreement on a special independent probe and a parliamentary audit into the Choi soon scandal. With this, prosecutors are also stepping up their investigation into the chairs of Korea's largest conglomerates. A number of President Park's key aides, such as the former Presidential Secretary for Public Affairs An bong Gun and Ex-Secretary for Administrative Affairs Lee jae Man, as well as former Vice Minister of Culture Kim Chung, were questioned. President Park, who faces questioning as the first sitting Korean president, hired an attorney on the 15th. The massive power of abuse scandal has brought with it confusion and continual political turmoil. We look at the recent developments and what ramifications they will have. So it looks like the prosecution investigation into the president is uh, imminent. The president uh, has hired a lawyer and they're now discussing ways to conduct this uh, interview between the prosecution and the president. Some have criticized, though, that this is all part of a delay tactic. What do you think? Right. Uh, one more thing was added to the uh, whirlwind of activities you mentioned, uh, which was the announcement by president's personal attorney that uh, he would need more time uh, to cooperate with the prosecutor's office, uh, which uh, too many South Koreans uh, contradicting the uh, promise uh, President Park made in her second apology that uh, she would uh, be totally open to get the investigation by the prosecutor's office if needed. Mm -hmm. um, some people criticize that as a delaying tactic, and others argue that uh, just like any ordinary citizens, uh, President uh, has a right to a uh, due process of law. Um, so we'll see. But as long as the prosecution's office activity uh, is uh, delayed, then uh, public's anger uh, about the uh, lack of visible uh, actions taken by the Chongwade, the Blue House, to assume responsibility for the scandals um, cannot be assuaged. Well, in the meantime, the ruling party is deeply divided and uh, the opposition bloc is calling for either an impeachment or resignation of the president. There was even one opposition presidential hopeful who went so far as to say that uh, perhaps we should um, call an early end to the mm. current president's term and call an early election. Yes, I think the situation is very serious and uh, very urgent. Well, the, uh, after Choi soon scandal broke out, well, Korean politics in some sense stopped. Particularly, the government cannot play proper role in governing the state. 
Uh, in the, such a kind of situation, the role of the uh, politicians seems to be more important. Uh, I think the most important thing at the moment is that politicians should uh, meet together and discuss uh, the situation, discuss the solution to the situation together. But the, uh, right now, each political party is just try to uh, um, and seek for its own political party's interest rather than national interests. So I think the, uh, 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 considering the uh, seriousness of the situation, definitely politicians um, I mean, meet together without any uh, terms and conditions and they should have to share their ideas to overcome the current situation. Mm -hmm. All the while, public pressure is mounting um, on all the parties that are involved, as shown in last weekend's anti-government protest, which is said to have been the largest in recent history. The Chongwade, for the time being, said it's closely monitoring the situation, and that the president uh, is looking for ways to fulfill her duties while normalizing uh, state affairs. Right. Judging from the initial response from the uh, Changhua then President Park remains determined to fulfill her duty as the president regardless of the public pressure for her resignation. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have to wait and see. And the uh, public criticism is not only confined to the Blue House mm -hmm. but to the political parties. Think about it. Uh, South Korean citizens are not supposed to uh, you know, t take to the st street, right? What's the point of having representative liberal democracy mm -hmm. if political parties do not function? Then what's the role of National Assembly mm -hmm. as an organization to assemble, aggregate, and represent pu public will yeah. in appropriate ways? So the division among political parties, uh, especially the opposition party leaders, uh, failing to provide a viable roadmap to resolve the current um, crisis is another source of disappointment and frustration to the South Korean public. Mm -hmm. And this massive protest uh, received a great deal of attention uh, from uh, global media as well, particularly for being so peaceful and orderly, which mm -hmm. is not that easy when you know that there are hundreds of thousands of people mm -hmm. gathered in mm -hmm. one place. I think the, uh, uh, those who participated in this uh, the protest, I mean this weekend, last weekend, uh, were the families, I mean, including I mean, young children and then even high school teenagers. Uh, that means that the, uh, uh, those who participated in the uh, uh, big rally in the past, they had their own interest, I mean, involved interest in their uh, protest. But this time, uh, the, uh, the participants in this rally I and mean, protest they had cold head but warm heart. Mm -hmm. That means that without involving interest, personal interest or organizational institutional interest, they just try to express what they're thinking, I mean, which could be very important for the future of the career. Uh, so I think uh, in this uh, regard, I mean, this point, definitely they have different the background or reasons for uh, the, uh, the big protest. Mm -hmm. Second one, the actually uh, the matured uh, citizenship. The, by using force, well, in the past they want to express what they thought. But these days, by using force, it cannot be acceptable I mean, in every, I mean, by means, in every means. Professor Sin, um Based upon your explanations, which I find totally agreeable, that's a very bad news for the Blue House, Chongwa there. Mm -hmm. right. Because uh, mm -hmm. if it's a representation of organizational interest, then there is something that Blue House may do in order to appease the demand. But if the uh, demand of the protesters is the one singular, mm -hmm. which is the uh, with withdrawal, uh, of the Blue House, the Park Geun-hye leadership, resignation, mm -hmm. then there's only one answer mm -hmm. that will satisfy the angry public, yeah. mm -hmm. engaging peaceful demonstration. Mm -hmm. I, I fully agree with the, uh, Dr. Pong, I mean, because, you know, unlike the uh, past uh, protest, definitely the message was very clear. But I cannot find any follow-up uh, responses from not only from the government or president but also from the the politicians. I think this is very serious. From the bottom of my heart, uh, politicians and leaders, political leaders in our country should take the situation very seriously. Mm -hmm. yeah, would it be too extreme if I may say that 
Um, there is a reason that we have a legislative body of mm -hmm. the government, National Assembly, uh, in order to deal with such a crisis situation on behalf of the entire exactly. constituents. Otherwise, then the... At the moment, the, there the, are participants the, the, in the right. protest. <laughs> so the salary for the members of National Assembly should be disimbursed mm -hmm. uh, for the general participants in the street. So what could the president and the Chongwan do at this juncture? It doesn't look like it has a lot of options. Well, it's a very, very difficult answer to, to, I mean, question to answer. Well, the uh, politicians, I mean, including president, should have to listen to the voice from the people because we're living in a democratic country. The president and the, uh, the involving government officials should take the uh, investigation very sincerely and seriously. Mm -hmm. What do you think uh, about the fate of the ruling party? A lot of fingers were pointed at the ruling party. I think the, considering the current situation, the ruling party uh, seems to be divided. This is not the time for them to uh, seek for their political party's interests or personal interests without the nation. Well, politicians can, I mean, exist. Without nation, the government can exist. So it must be very clear. I mean, uh, they should put the first priority on the national interests and the nation itself. Mm. I mean, this is most important thing for everyone all Koreans and uh, even including the old politicians. Mm. For a while, it was even suggested that the prosecutorial investigation is being used by Chiang mm. Wade to hopefully win back some public right. support. But at this point, we have to wonder whether that is even remotely possible, you know, winning back public support. Right, but the next step can be the uh, uh, special prosecutor. Then the whole situation will be moved to the next stage. And I know I sound like a broken record, but uh, I have to ask uh, what the opposition party leaders have done in order to uh, get the ball moving in the right direction because uh, they still remain uh, basically with the same rhetoric saying that the Blue House has to take responsible measures. Again, just uh, we have talked about before then what constitutes a responsible action uh, sh that should be taken by the Blue House the opposition party leaders failed to come up with a consensus. As Dr. Bong uh, pointed out, political leaders, particularly opposition party leaders, just asking the step down of the president uh, from time to time, I mean, they just about, I mean, explain about uh, the measures after sp stepping down of the right, president, right. but they do not uh, give us enough explanation what kind of strategies, what kind of policies and ideas they have after right. the stepping down of the president. So people are very, I mean, get confusing or concerned about and, situation. And insecure too. Right? Yes. So, so I think the uh, political leaders, particularly opposition party leaders, should have to suggest a more detailed idea of how they're going to deal with the situation after stepping down the president. So at the risk of making you sound like a broken record again, <laughs> where do we find a breakthrough? Where do we find the breakthrough um, if the Blue House still insists on you know, staying the course? Then I think the only measure left in the hands of the parliament is to uh, push the impeachment of the presidency. And that's a disappointing part of this party politics. Uh, personally, I think, is uh, they are so preoccupied with the uh, uh, probability of success of the impeachment bill. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you have to do things, not because of its uh, probability of success or failure, but because it is a right course of action, mm -hmm. regardless of the prospective you know, result. And if uh, Blue House uh, refused to take uh, the matter in its own hand, then the ball will be automatically moved in the hands of the parliament, and the, that's the role of the parliament. I want to underline the, uh, the situation should under control as soon as possible. Uh, considering the external circumstances facing us, the, uh, we have to uh, control the situation as soon as possible. Look, I mean, the president could not participate in APEC summits. Right. And then Mr. Donald Trump became the president. So his election uh, gives us, I mean, 
the uh, uh, I mean new uh, uh, I mean relations with the between Korea and the United States. And when we look at the uh, uh, other countries, they are right now running to defend their uh, interests, particularly in the relationship with the United States, but new new president. But we do not anything at the moment because mm. of the Chechnya scandal. Yes, everything seems to be at a standstill, mm. right? In the midst of this uh, political uncertainty, Korea and Japan inked a preliminary deal on sharing military intelligence after their third round of working level talks in Tokyo. This has created a huge public backlash. So how did this agreement come to be and what are the points of contention? Take a look. Korea and Japan have signed a preliminary pact on military intelligence sharing after three rounds of working level talks. The General Security of Military Information Agreement, or GSOMIA, is a deal among countries to share defense intelligence. Seoul and Tokyo had so far shared information by way of the U.S. In 2010, Japan's foreign minister proposed the two countries work towards signing a deal. But during the very last stage, the agreement fell apart due to strong opposition from the Korean public, who saw it as the result of backdoor negotiations. This year, in late October, the two governments once again agreed to reopen talks, leading to a preliminary deal within less than 20 days. One of the main factors contributing to the rapid progress on the deal, which had been shelved for four years, undoubtedly was the increased threats from North Korea's missile and nuclear program. Japan boasts strong intelligence gathering capabilities with six Aegis ships, five spy satellites, and much more. Not only that, its geographical proximity to North Korea is expected to yield more information on Pyongyang's SLBM program. But the deal has unleashed strong criticism from Korea's opposition parties, who have argued Seoul and Tokyo have yet to resolve issues surrounding their shared history and that such an agreement should not take place during the height of political turmoil caused by the power abuse scandal. We'll look at why the two countries pushed through with the intelligence pact at this juncture. So this is called the General Security of Military Information Agreement, or uh, GSOMIA, which basically means Seoul and Tokyo will be sharing military intelligence. What led to this deal? Well, in fact, the, uh, uh, Korea has uh, a similar agreement with 24 countries around the world. And then, the, uh, according to the Ministry of Defense, so in this context, to have an agreement with Japan, well, it's not a special, exceptional one. I mean, considering situation happening on, in the Korean Peninsula because of the North Korean uh, the uh, nuclear programs. Mm -hmm. Actually, as we know very well, they have conducted two of uh, the uh, nuclear tests already this year, and they have launched several dozens of the uh, uh, long-range missiles. Uh, so the uh, tensions on the Korean Peninsula has been increased. And the, uh, uh, the hostility of the North Korean regime uh, seems to be continued for a while. So uh, in this context, definitely the sharing the information with Japan seems to be very important. Mm -hmm. Particularly, uh, we have uh, more information through the uh, human uh, network because we have uh, many uh, North Korean defectors and from them, uh, we could get the uh, many valuable information. Certainly, we have more information from the uh, human human network than any other countries. But how about the uh, you know or the satellite? Uh, I mean, the system which collect the information, and the, also the uh, monitoring system. Uh, I mean, to detect the uh, uh, submarines. Uh, I mean, the Japanese uh, uh, information agencies have more uh, the uh, capabilities, uh, the uh, uh, advantages in collecting the data through this kind of method. Mm -hmm. So according to the Minister of Defense, they said that by having an agreement with Japan, definitely we could get more valuable information, uh, I mean, military information from Japan. Mm -hmm. 
Well, if you remember, though, Korea and Japan um, had, all, had almost signed the deal in, 2000 in 2012, 2012 right. right? But it fell through mm -hmm. uh, because of accusations of mm -hmm. backdoor negotiations. Right, right. This time along, though, the negotiations m moved really fast. Mm -hmm. How do you think that was possible? Well, the, first of all, there is a strong resolve uh, demonstrated by the South Korean government to push through uh, the signing this time, uh, not relying on the backdoor um, you know, negotiations mm -hmm. and agreement. And the uh, elimination of, at least temporarily, the historical issues as a major obstacle to upgrading the security cooperation with Japan was also incentive for the Korean government to seize this uh, window of, of opportunity to sign GSOMIA. And as Professor Shin correctly pointed out, then the uh, rapidly increasing military threat from the North cannot be any longer ignored mm -hmm. or dismissed as a still very remote mm -hmm. threat to national security of South Korea. Uh, think about it, North Korea only this year, you know, uh, in one year, has tested the uh, Musta missile eight times. Mm -hmm. South Korea needs to enforce its own defense and deterrence capability. And signing Jisomia with Japan uh, mm -hmm. is regarded as one of the essential uh, step forward in dealing with the North Korean threats. Mm. Mm. So a lot of people would like to know whether Korea really needs this agreement. <laughs> well, I, I think uh, why this question um, is important at the moment because the um, in the wake of the Treasurer probe, well, not enough uh, discussions about uh, disagreement uh, was made, mm. not only in the inside the parliaments but also outside the parliaments. Which means that the uh, according to uh, Ministry of National Defense. The minister Han actually, they said he said that at the in, at the parliament he said he will have enough time to persuade the needs of this agreement to the people and, and to the politicians. But actually, he didn't. So politicians and particularly opposition party leaders, why we have to hurry? I mean, we have enough time, and then after enough discussion about this issue, we will be able to uh, consider signing this agreement with Japan. Uh, but uh, this is uh, the fact uh, that we have. And the another one behind the scene, actually, as you know very well, many issues between two countries uh, remain un unsolved, such as comfort women issues and Tokto issues mm -hmm. and the uh, current Japanese government policy change, such as that they changed the constitution so they could have the uh, um, force and they could start the war. Um, those kind of things, I mean, uh, gave, have, have given us the very uh, bad images or, or uh, some concerning point about the, uh, the relationship with Japan. Without uh, solving those kind of the issues, uh, I mean, just, they just tried to put the, some, uh, put the first priority on the needs of this uh, military inform intelligence, I mean, information sharing. So I think uh, this is the point why people, I mean, the concern about uh, this agreement and why politicians criticize the government. Yeah, especially, especially the opposition uh, the, parties. Yes. Are no, I, I, I see their point, mm -hmm. but at the same time, um, in, for the matter that's uh, directly related to national survival and security, mm -hmm. you have to maintain kind of a two-track two approach mm -hmm. towards Japan. Of course, we have to be really stern and principled in terms of demanding Japan for proper uh, apology and compensations or other uh, actions uh, to redress the past wrongdoings. But at the same time, uh, it is essential for South Korea and Japan to enhance uh, security cooperation because we have common you know, threat to our national security. And Japan is the only country only country in the world that is operating the surveillance system mm. that tracked down all the activities inside North Korea mm. 24 hours nonstop. N not even United States does that. So if you combine the you know, human net, you mentioned the South Korea's strength and Japan's strength in uh, reconnaissance and surveillance based upon the visual and uh, uh, audible uh, tracking system, then South Korea's capability to preemptively dealing with uh, North Korean threat will be greatly enhanced. Mm. So it is not only for Japan, but for South mm. Korea. Mm. And the 
the comp re relief involved in signing the GSOMIA this time is that if South Korea decides to withdraw from GSOMIA, it can. Every year, uh, the GSOMIA is subject to a renewal. So there is a safety net that can uh, help assuage the concern in South Korean public mm. and National Assembly about this, whether we are just writing a blank, blank check to uh, self-defense forces of Japan. Could there have been diplomatic calculations behind uh, the haste? Right, as I said, that, uh, I guess uh, the, both Park Geun-hye administration and the Abe administration desperately wanted to take the most advantage of the, the joint declaration on December 28th mm -hmm. last year mm -hmm. that the comfort woman issue uh, had been you know, permanently and finally settled. Uh, they just wanted to seize the window of opportunity right, when right. it was open, mm -hmm. at least temporarily. Mm -hmm. But we have to really take this question seriously. Do we need to worry mostly about the resurgence of Japan's military or landing of Jap Japan's self-defense forces on the Korean Peninsula? Or do we need to worry more about North Korea's military threat? And for most of Japanese people, the memory of the Pacific War was a very painful one, source of great regret. So the fear of Japan entrapped in unwanted military situation, possibly another war on the Korean Peninsula, is as strong as some of the Japanese conservatives' desire to build its military uh, capability strong. So we have to really see everything in the proper perspective. Well, from the Koreans' perspective, I suppose the memory of uh, Japan's annexation of Korea is still very raw. Very, yeah. Right, right. <laughs> but uh, uh, whenever I uh, pose that question to my Japanese friends, uh, the security experts mm -hmm. in Japan, they always say that today's Japan is not the same as the old Japan. We just want to live as a peace-loving uh, country without uh, you know, strong armed forces or involved in in the military affairs in the world, mm. just focus on making prosperity. Mm. But, you know, memory lasts. Yeah. And uh, there's a saying that uh, when you are meeting a person, the best evidence to tell uh, the future of the friendship uh, with a person is to uh, look back the past you know, behavior of this person. Mm. Mm. Well, uh, with the opposition uh, bloc threatening to push for the dismissal of Defense Minister Hamingo, we'll see what happens to this uh, preliminary, preliminary deal that's been signed for now. now. Let's move on to our last story of the week. With Donald Trump now set to become the next president of the United States, a lot of attention is on how this will affect Korea-U.S. relations, especially regarding national security and diplomacy. We'll take a look at what lies ahead. Concerns about a Trump risk in Korea's national defense have emerged following the recent results of the U.S. presidential election. The greatest concern is upcoming negotiations for defense cost sharing with Washington in 2018. President-elect Trump has openly called on allies like South Korea to take on a larger expense burden. This has also been the case for Japan. As of 2012, 28,500 U.S. troops have been stationed in Korea, with Seoul shouldering 782 million U.S. dollars in defense costs. A simple comparison of costs is not easy as the amount differs depending on the number of troops stationed, their duties, and other variables. But Trump has openly expressed his dissatisfaction with the costs as of now, even mentioning the possibility of withdrawing troops if Seoul doesn't take on a larger cost burden. This has prompted speculation that Washington's transfer of wartime operational control, which had been pushed back, may take place within Trump's tenure in office. Meanwhile, Beijing had hinted it may be more open to seeing a Trump administration in the White House. Hong Kong's daily newspaper, The Standard, speculated that without the U.S. policing the world, China would be able to enhance its geopolitical and economic leadership. Trump's victory has put many Asian countries on their toes. But for now, experts say what's more important is to take a close look at the president-elect's new advisors and try to understand in which direction U.S. policies will be headed. Until we see who the secretaries of state, uh, defense, treasury, USTR, and the national security advisor actually are, it's really difficult to say 
of what's going to happen in the early months of a Trump candidate. What policies will the incoming Trump administration have for Korea and the rest of Asia? And how can Seoul prepare for the changes to come? Now, Trump's campaign message had been all about putting America first, although during his acceptance speech, he, he did uh, tell the world community that mm. he will deal fairly mm. with everyone. So should we be worried about uh, Seoul-Washington alliance? Considering the past, uh, the experience, uh, we can uh, very carefully expect that there must be some changes in his policy regarding the relations between Korea and USA, mm. but not very much. Mm. I do think that the, uh, there must be some policy changes uh, I mean, uh, regarding the trade between two countries. After he was elected, he officially said that the American trade policy maybe will be more protectionistic one than before. Maybe there must be some negotiation, renegotiations for Korea USFTA. But regarding the importance of Korea as a trading partner for US economy, vice versa, definitely uh, we cannot see big, big changes in the trading relations between two countries. Mm. Well, in the uh, security uh, sector, maybe uh, there are some possibility that USA ask Korean government uh, having renegotiation for the cost for the stay of the U.S. soldiers in the Korean Peninsula. Uh, at the moment, Korea, uh, I mean, the uh, paid about 900 billion won per year for the stay of U.S. soldiers in the Korean Peninsula. Maybe Mr. Trump asked more share, mm. I mean, to the Korean government. Yeah, but we have to wait and see. Yeah, in fact, that was uh, the argument that he had against mm -hmm. uh, a lot of American allies, that they don't share right. enough of the cost burden. Mm -hmm. But the uh, current uh, agreement of the burden sharing is locked until at the end of 2018. So, yes, there is a possibility that the Trump administration may pressure South Korean government to to scrap the existing deal and renegotiate the burden sharing agreement from the scratch, but I don't know whether it's highly probable or not, mm -hmm. uh, because South Korean government has a good argument to make. Right, right. And secondly, well, like all things in the world, uh, security alliance is subject to the law of evolution. So, uh, in response to the rapidly changing security conditions surrounding the Korean Peninsula, then. South Korea's share of role and burden in dealing with the common threat with the United States may have to change as well. So South Korea is not really singled out as the only country under pressure from Washington to increase its burden sharing, but Japan, NATO member countries mm -hmm. will deal with the same you know, conditions. So we have some examples that we can uh, take into account and emulate mm. for uh, strategizing our own response. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it is true that uh, uh, Japan's case is far more easier uh, than South Korea's because assuming more burden in exchange for the United States supporting Japan's self-defense forces to play a larger role in military affairs, even in the context of the U.S.-Japan alliance, or in the context of the UN sponsored the peacekeeping operation is a welcoming change for Abe administration. That's what they want. Right. Mm. That will help Japan uh, to become so-called normal country. Mm -hmm. mm. That has been all along the uh, policy goal for Abe administration. Yeah. So the choice is uh, clearer and easier to make for Abe or the Ministry of Japan, but South Korea's uh, strategic position is far more complicated mm -hmm. than yeah. Japan's. So, so I think the uh, uh, Prime Minister Abe just met with the Mr. Trump. Mm -hmm. The details of their talk are not publicized yet, uh, but I think the, uh, uh, the outcomes at the uh, talk between two leaders could be, a guide, some, could be a, some guiding uh, guidelines for the Korea to set up the new uh, uh, relationship with the United States. But as I said before, the USA is competing with China to take the initiatives in the region, or, or not only in the region, but also in the world, definitely. So the cooperation with uh, the Japan and Korea seems to be very important for the United States. So, so a dramatic change in the relationship with Japan and with Korea 
seems to be a kind of some burden on uh, for the new uh, the uh, American government. Mm -hmm. So in this context, we can uh, very carefully guess that there will be no big changes in the relationship with the United States. Uh, I think so. Yeah, well, there are already concerns over a, a possible withdrawal of U.S. troops from the Korean Peninsula and an early transfer of uh, wartime operational control. Do you think these concerns are premature then? Uh, presidents are subject to the very precipitative uh, learning curve aided by the security experts uh, in the team. Um, so uh, we have to wait and see. Um, what is important for both sides is to realize that U.S.-South Korea security partnership is not only benefiting to South Korea, but also to the United States. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it is uh, imperative for South Korean government to persuade the Trump administration about the significance and the great benefits of maintaining the security partnership with South Korea. Mm -hmm. And the two things are very important for South Korea to make its arguments persuasive to the new administration in Washington. One, it has already done, the signing of the Jisomia with Japan. It is a clear signal to the United States that South Korea is not a selfish security partner. Mm. It is willing to cooperate with Japan as a part of its overall effort to upgrade uh, its security partnership and cooperation with the United States. Because uh, North Korea is estimated to have at least 200 uh, TEL, which is Transporter Erector launcher, Launchers, the, so that North Korea's nuclear and missile threats are extremely elusive because, because it is now mobile, mm. like the KN-08 and the SLBM, the Submarine uh, Launched Ballistic Missiles. So South Korea's demonstration of its willingness to cooperate with Japan, despite historic, historical antagonism, in order to be more effectively dealing with the common threat of North Korea's missiles and nuclear weapons is a good demonstration uh, to Washington that South Korea can be trusted. Another test will be the scheduled deployment of U.S. thought system in South Korea. It is particularly important for Trump administration because the key figures in the Trump cabinet like uh, Newt Gingrich, for the former House of Speaker, mm -hmm. who made the Republican Party election campaign during the Clinton administration uh, with the slogan, missile defense system is a promise with America. And Rudolph Giuliani, who was a New York City mayor when 9-11 happened, is extremely sensitive to proliferation of weapons of mass destruction, including nuclear weapons. So. If South Korea uh, maintains its commitment to introduce U.S. thought for the protection of U.S. soldiers on its soil, then it will be another clear sign um, that South Korea is a trustworthy, stalwart ally of the United States. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe Mr. Trump doesn't approve of the thought deployment. Right, exactly. So it is uh, off the table, mm -hmm. then South Korean government doesn't have to worry about the domestic opposition and criticism mm -hmm. of the deployment of thought. Mm -hmm. But it is important for South Korean leadership not to swerve from the scheduled deployment of thought preemptively or pre prematurely mm -hmm. prior to the, the Trump administration making its own decision with regard to the mm -hmm. deployment. We have to wrap up. Any final thoughts you'd like to leave us with? Well, I think the, uh, uh, I want to talk about the government role in setting up new relationship with new American pre mm -hmm. prime the government because the uh, USA has been the, one of the most important partners politically and economically for us. So because of the uh, domestic political turmoil, we do not take any uh, effective measures. I mean, we do not prepare efficiently for uh, the future relationship with the United States government. So we have to particularly the government officials dealing with the uh, foreign relations and economic uh, the, uh, the, uh, policies, they should have to make every effort to prepare for the uh, renegotiation for the new relations with new American government. Mm -hmm. Dr. Paul? What we have not really discussed is uh, economic matters. Um, we focus on security matters and domestic political situations, but these, are, these issues are not really separate from a national economy. Mm. And I'm concerned what kind of uh, blind spots 
are left untouched or undermanaged mm. uh, by the government and corporations when we are going through this political crisis. Mm. That's why we need an end to this crisis as soon as possible. Definitely. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Well, thank you very much for sharing your thoughts with us today. Thank you. That is all for this edition of News Inside. Thanks for watching. We'll be back with more next week.